Climate change is one of the biggest challenges of our time. It concerns every one of us. Today, our planet hosts 7 billion people. Already now, we use far more resources and produce far more greenhouse gases than it can handle. If we do not act now, how can our planet meet the needs of 9 billion of us in 2050? The increased production of greenhouse gases that has changed the Earth's climate and atmosphere is of great concern to scientists, politicians and citizens around the world. Global warming has caused dramatic reductions in seasonal sea ice as storms, floods and droughts are intensified by global warming. Although developing countries have contributed the least to climate change, they suffer the most. Small island states in the Pacific are threatened to disappear due to rising sea levels. It's likely that the number of climate refugees will increase in the future. To ensure that the rights and needs of current and future generations around the world are met, we have to deal with climate change now. But how? Major UN conferences have recognised that education is crucial for shaping sustainable development. The UN Framework Convention on Climate Change aims to provide a framework to address climate change effects caused by human production of greenhouse gases. Education can help us understand the causes of climate change. It can also empower us to take action. One way in which each of us can contribute to reduce greenhouse gas production and climate change effects is to choose a more sustainable lifestyle. Education can motivate us to make this choice. With the Youth Exchange Initiative, UNESCO and UNEP support youth projects on sustainable lifestyles in 45 countries around the world. Education programs can especially increase capacities of those who are endangered the most to deal with impacts of climate change, people from rural areas, coastal communities, girls and women. Dealing with the global challenge of climate change raises the question of what kind of education we need in the future. To cope with uncertain future scenarios, but also to have the chance to shape the world we want to live in, we need to see the bigger picture. Empowering our children and youth today to solve the challenges of tomorrow is a great idea, but how does it actually work? Let us take the example of a group of students from a rural secondary school that discusses climate change and its effects in the classroom. After learning about the causes and effects of greenhouse gases on the Earth's atmosphere in the science class, students then discuss in small groups around what each of them can do to reduce their individual carbon footprint. They develop a checklist on how to save energy at home and in the classroom, and they organise small information meetings for their classmates and the local primary school. As a second action, students start planting local native trees with their biology teacher on the school property. While learning about global and ecological contexts, they also discover their individual possibilities to act and acquire social skills needed for the world of work. Taking on ownership of the project, a group of students also informs the local community about their project at community festivities and provides information to the school magazine and the local newspaper to disseminate their work. We hope that as many schools as possible will follow examples like this and we will support them in their efforts. Education is a powerful tool to address climate change and to ensure that the rights and needs of people today and tomorrow can be met. Let us use it and get active today.